So the question now is, so what is the effect the effect of frequency domain sampling frequency domain sampling on the time domain So how do we see that? Um, just to give a simple example, so imagine we have a sampling rate of 1 kilohertz. Let's just say our discrete Fourier transform has 1000 samples. And our discrete Fourier transform has 1000 samples, so we're getting our xk out of this here. So let's have a look at our x case here. So these are our case here. So we have somewhere, so the index number 999, this is the highest one here. So we've got zero somewhere here, and then we've got in the middle here our center point here, which is n half minus one, and um, the spectrum might just look like that. So the the question is now so what is the spacing between two of these k's yeah so so what's the spacing in in hertz or in, in this frequency here and um, because i've been quite lazy here so obviously this must be this, this must be 500 hertz because that's fs half that's our nyquist frequency here so so therefore the spacing in hertz must be one hertz so this means the resolution of this one here is one hertz the resolution is one hertz yeah so this means that the lowest frequency we can represent is one hertz and then there's only dc so if we have a frequency for example of um, 0.5 hertz then this cannot be represented because there's no k for this let's do now the analytics of this so how do we see that so let's write down our Fourier transform our discrete Fourier transform again here so that's n equals from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n and then e2 minus j 2 pi of n k n so now this is not exactly our discrete Fourier transform because the boundary is running from minus infinity to plus infinity remember in the proper discrete Fourier transform this would be from 0 to n minus 1 but uh, because we would like to check how the effect is on an infinite time series here we just sneaking in the infinite sign here so this is basically an infinite infinite series and so what we would like to do now we would like to go go back to our go back to discrete Fourier transform Okay, so the trick is similar to the one we have done before. So if we, we divide this formula up here into chunk into chunks of n. So let's do that, x of k, and then this is here l equals minus infinity to plus infinity so and then we are creating our chunks with this l variable here so ln and then this runs to ln plus n plus one and then we just write the same from above here again minus j 
2 pi divided by n kn. So we see already we are slowly getting, um, we see already we are slowly going towards our DFT. So the next step is just by moving again our ln here into the formula here so that we are reaching basically our DFT here. Oops, and this is here a negative sign. Not to mix it up with a plus sign because we're just running to n minus 1 here. Okay, so let's do this now. Let's swap these two summation signs. Okay, so let's move the ln into our x there. So it's still running from minus infinity to plus infinity. And so now we've got here the second sum is running now from n minus 1, what we want to have for the DFT. And we move this now, our ln in here. So this gives us e2 minus j 2 pi divided by n. And this is here k n. So, so now the ln has moved in here and that's the same trick we used before. So now the next step is just swap these two summation signs here. Swap them. So let's say this is now xk and so now the so our n index is running now here and then we have, we have our L index inside and this is running from minus infinity to plus infinity and now we have n minus ln so the x is still the same and then e2 minus j2 pi divided by n k n so so now we see something something here so this looks like a periodic repetition And this one here looks like our proper inverse inverse discrete discrete Fourier transform. <coughs> 